In this tutorial we'll look at InDesign to make a portfolio. So we're going to set new document and number of pages, 10. You can have pages facing or not. On a portfolio I find it easier just to take that option off. Then you've got the paper size so we can set a custom. So depending on what size you want you can add in those details, give it a name and that will then show up as a custom. I've already got this A1 set up there. And I'm going to have it landscape, columns and gutter, and margins are about how it will print. So then we're going to look here in pages and you can see those 10 pages show up. And if I scroll down, we can also see that they exist there as well. So then I'm going to set up a master, so I double click the A master. And anything I do on this page will be repeated throughout the portfolio. So I'm just using it to create these guides. I can be quite accurate as to where they go. So that one's 400. And you drag them down from the rulers, or drag them across from the rulers, and set them throughout the page. So I can drag these down horizontally. Then I'm going to add in some type. So drag out a box and enter text. And then this title should go throughout the whole portfolio. So if I click back to here, this is page one, etc. Page two, you can see that that margins and anything that I did on that master are continued throughout. So I'm going to save this file. So here's the file in the folder and you can see save that there. Now what it's worth noting is that InDesign does not save all the JPEGs and all the source files into it. You need to leave them in a folder and the InDesign will then reference these individual files. So if you move computers you need to take the whole folder across to the other computer. So the first thing we're going to do is place an image, so from that folder we just saw, place this image and top left hand corner and there it is. So I can resize and then we want to, you can see that's cropped it so I'm going to use the auto fit and that brings it down into the size of the window we have. So just slightly change the proportions. So the next thing is I'm going to use one of these boxes here and it's a rectangle frame so it allows you to draw out a rectangle, change the size, so you've got height. And you can be very specific as to what size you want that image to be. Then we go to file, place, with it highlighted and auto fit and that's our image imported. So you'll notice if I drag this out it changes the whole proportion of that and it actually crops it. So if I double click you get this orange box and it still crops it to the same size and that's without the auto fit on. So you can actually have a larger image which is cropped down by double clicking and adjusting. So now I'm just going to place another image, but this time I'm going to use an illustrator file. So this is a vector file. So the advantage being that we can bring in JPEGs and vector line files. Again double clicking, adjusting the scale of that. And you can see now that this vector file is scaled and if I zoom in that they retain their vector line quality and don't become rasterized and a bitmap. So place this other file here. And this way we can integrate both 
pages which have vector image and also let's do some graphics so this is just going to be a black background so you can see we've got our fill and line color and let's add some text in and the best way to work on this is to find examples of things you like and inspired by and then work backwards and think how you, they could be created so I'm just adding in um, a number you know, taking it off the page so this is actually the true page size so we're getting away from the the typical black text on white background you know, on some applications that would be appropriate but for print you may not think it's kind of ideal because it uses up too much ink etc but it has a a different feel and sense it feels more like a design project rather than say a a, a word document okay so I'm going to use the pen tool if I click and let go I get these sharp edges and click and hold on I get these bezier curves which I can adjust to make curved lines the more you use this the more you'll kind of understand how they work so I'm going to draw out a shape with the pen tool and place an image inside it so there's my shape place exactly like before and auto fit and I can sort of adjust the crop of that and this then allows you to be quite precise with how an image potentially is presented. It may not be something you want to use but it's good to know that you can. It also starts to understand how a vector line works. So if I use the white arrow, this is the same in Illustrator, I can then adjust these points to make exactly the shape I want. So I'm now going to draw another shape and this time click with the text inside that shape and you can see I'm adding in text which will be constrained by the limits of that shape, vector shape of course going back in and adjusting and tweaking to the desired effect so now we're going to do a file export and this will allow us to export this InDesign document as a self-contained PDF so here we've got our compression so I'm going to do this a high quality so 300 dpi or pixels per inch is the key number here so if you're going to print something 300 pixels per inch is where you want it you can add things like printer's marks, crop marks which are useful when you're um, taking out, I'd never use the page information and page numbering uh, because generally you don't want page numbers on portfolio pages and there's some other things here like you can password encrypt and stop people opening it up if you don't want them to or printing from it so once we've done that that's okay and that's then a PDF that can be opened or printed or viewed but probably too big to email so this is where if we open it up in Acrobat we can see it's got a decent quality of image now this time we're going to do a file export and when we export it we'll use the print settings but we're going to go in and change it from high quality to small file size so then for screen resolution it's 72 pixels per inch so you don't need any more than 72 and this will make a lot smaller file so if something's going to be viewed on a device or web based then 72 is fine so I've titled this one as small you can see that's 214 kilobytes as opposed to about 800 so it's a quarter of the size and obviously that will increase the bigger the document so this one 
if I zoom in, this is the small, you can see that the resolution isn't as good as this one's the large one as that. So there's there's a detrimental sort of effect in terms of how much you can zoom into something, but generally on screen it will be fine. And if you print obviously that's not going to print on the small version. But then if we go into our vector lines, they all show up fine, as does the text. There's no resolution degradation in those. And then again, this is our small version. So there's no difference in the vector line, whether it's small or large. A vector line will just show as a crisp, clean line. So that's um, about it, and that's our document ready to print or view.